that, and mainly a lot of it's from the misconceptions that have been put out there by, you know, city leaders, of course, mm -hmm. to make them look better and to take the heat off of their backs for the, the decisions they've made. They're demonizing the working class. Yeah, yeah it's very I, convenient I for them too. to do that. With, yeah. Of course, the economy, the economy tanked, and now this is a perfect, perfect time for them to, to put us in the, uh, as the bad guy. You know? when, when we retire at 20 years, and, and most of us are forced to retire in that 20th year because of the way the drop language is written, you're leaving with 60% of your pay. And you're still, you're not going to be getting Social Security, you're not going to be getting Medicare to help offset that. Many firefighters, because you're, you're retiring at a younger age, you have families that you still have to support, young children you still have to support, and 100% of your medical that you have to pay, which I don't think a lot of people take into consideration. Most medical insurance was going to cost somewhere between $700, $1,000 a month. It's a lot of money. Yeah. Most firefighters are going to retire and take a 40% pay reduction when they retire. So you don't have medical insurance after they retire from the fire department? No, we, we're responsible for the premium payments. We can continue on with the city plan if we want to, or we can find our own plan, but oh. it's not paid for. But it's for. still for us to pay, to, to yeah. put the, the cost on us. They do not pay that. Yeah. That's a big chunk of change. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm not in that situation from the state of New York, and uh, uh, I pay more than I, I had to when I was actively working for the state, but uh, I don't know who's contributing, whether it's the PBA or mostly the state. I guess maybe it's part of the uh, deal that the PBA has made for retirees, so I don't, I don't have a big chunk of change coming out of my, uh, my uh, pension. But mm -hmm. uh, Jim, let me ask you, what do you think the prospects are? Well, let me first ask you, is there any any time set for when a contract may possibly be signed? As soon as the city starts being more forthcoming and, and things we've asked them and have we have all the information to provide our members, we can't vote on a contract. We don't know what, what the outcome of this whole thing is going to be. We've asked, they want a retroactive our pay, uh, but they won't put in writing exactly what it's going to be. You know, they want to take 6%, but they're not but they're not saying whether it's going to be retroactive or not. They're 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 wanting us to take their word for it, which we're not going to do. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sorry if we're not going to take their word for this, but I mean, we want things no. in writing. Any, any reasonable person would. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this not having a contract could go on indefinitely. Well, as far as I understand right now, the city's uh, in legal proceedings to get a court order to force us to vote. And so. we still have an appeal out as well, based on some of the, you know, the actions of the city that we didn't feel were appropriate yeah. and we're fighting. Uh, there recently was some kind of a decision that went against the union. Uh, can you fill, fill us in with that? What was that about? Uh, um, I think you had to post something on the bulletin boards, and there was, uh, what was that decision? I was surprised that you even got one decision that went against you. All the well, others, the city I think. got one as well. Who? The city also yeah, had I know. one. Yeah, we, we had one, the city had one. Um, ours was in reference to voting. Um, you know, they, they're asking us to vote. Oh. However, we have appeals that are out there, and our argument was how can we vote on something when we still don't know what the outcome of the appeal is going to be. That was our position, and uh, we were also led to believe that if we were going to continue to bargain in good faith at the negotiating table and come up with a viable solution for the pension, yeah. all that stuff would go away, and we could move forward and get to the, the problem and fix it. But we seem to be dragging the problem out Yeah, definitely. at I, a very I costly agree. rate. Yeah. Uh, I don't worry about whether I'm subjective or objective, uh, and I must tell you, I think that lawyer Suwiki is really sharp. I saw him in front of the city council the night that the city council was going to vote on unilaterally withdrawing one of their uh, PERB complaints. I think that was the issue that night, and I thought Suwiki was superb. <laughs> And, uh, well, he'll be happy to hear that. Oh, I, I thought he was great, and especially the way he 
recanted with the, the city's lawyer who said, well, we didn't hear from you. And he was saying, you're proving my point. He's been doing this a little while. <laughs> I bet. Well, I, I, I do like him. Uh, so let's see now. Jim, let me, let me ask you. How much does a starting fire personnel make per year? Okay, we have the information. When he so. starts, and then what will be his top pay after how many years? A starting firefighter? Yes. Mm -hmm. It makes eleven eighteen an hour. And they will top out, a firefighter will top out after 18 or 20, 20 years at $18.60 an hour. So 20 years. Now that's right. a firefighter. Of course, we have different, that's, that's the lowest rank. We yeah. have drivers, and paramedics, and lieutenants. Now, I'm a lieutenant. And I've been topped out for several years now, and my, my pay is at uh, $23.61 uh, an hour. Mm -hmm. In those positions, they're going to be dependent upon personal goals and available positions. You can't, not everybody's going to get to being a lieutenant. No. Um, you know, minimum wage is seven sixty seven an hour right now, so when you look at that, and a starting firefighter at 1118, and you take into consideration the 6% possibly retroactive wage decrease, you're not putting us at a too high of a wage or you know an hour compared to, compared to what a minimum wage employee would be receiving yeah and I'm sure critics would say oh well that may be the hourly pay but you have all those extra benefits that really makes the job just terrific um, you know the, the the benefits they're slowly going away I mean when you when you look at you know even what's happening at the state level you know FRS is changing. We have to make changes. We have to make adjustments to fix things. Yeah. Um, it's just part of part of keeping it sustainable. Okay. So you get about sixty percent pay after twenty years for yes. retirement. And at the present, the fire personnel are contributing eight percent. No, we're no. point five percent, half percent. Only half percent. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is what our previous negotiating teams, is what Jim was saying earlier, they said, hey, we'll take the lawyers out of it, We'll start. let us at least start to contribute until all this gets resolved, and that was rejected. We wanted to contribute 8.6%, which would have been approximately $24,000 a month in savings, and that was rejected as well. well. Okay, I'm, I'm very bad at figures. So you do 0.5%, that's less than 1%. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you w were willing to go up to 8%? Uh, previously, we've offered in excess of 10% that has been rejected and it's still on the table. Wow. That's a 1,900% increase. So the city wants to give us a 6% wage decrease. We're saying we'll take a wage decrease, but we'll give you 9.6% in a wage decrease, but it's going to be a sensible one that fixes the pension. Mm. And it's been rejected. That also gets our pension funded in 15 years at 80%. Well, I must say, in Mr. Parker or anybody else can uh, can email me and I'll publish it. It, it, it to me it, it does seem unfair and I'm because I come from civil service so I, but I, I don't think anybody even the electric electric union electrician union construction union or anybody would uh, be able to negotiate on, on these terms that uh, you're becoming that you're getting and by the way there's something about numbers when they get printed you know I got all bunch of numbers coming to me. I got a chart today that was published. It was a revised chart of the pensions of police and fire and it's mm -hmm. on my on my website. And uh, I, I suspect there's a lot of people get turned off like me with numbers because we can't handle it too well. But when I sit Don't here and, and although I had all the facts and figures coming, so I, I understand your problem getting out to the public and I hope we 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 do some good here. You had off you were originally giving the city less than 1% con contribution and you offered it up to 10%. Mm -hmm. Now, the, that's, that's again, how is, we got to the half a percent was the city giving it to us to make up for the salary so that we could come up to standard. Oh, I know that story. So, Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's not something that we negotiated or, or asked for. It was given I know. to us. Yeah. And during this whole process, whole negotiation thing, we haven't demanded more pay. We haven't demanded more benefits. Of course, we try to protect what we have. That's anybody would do that. But we've offered. We've made concessions. We want to pay into the pension. We want to make it better. 
but they won't let us. It doesn't benefit the firefighters one bit if our pension isn't financially sound because that means it's not going to be there for us. Yeah. We have just as much of a vested interest in this as anybody else. 